Paragon is a MOBA. It's a 5 on 5 skill based, last hitting, tower diving, lane ganking, team fighting MOBA. It has three lanes, it has creeps and mega creeps, it has towers, it's got jungles, it's got barracks and it's got a pair of thrones. It doesn't have a top down isometric viewpoint and doesn't require you to right click to move. Interested? Then strap in and old Uncle Beard shall weave you a tale and do some splaining about what Paragon is and why it's got its meaty hooks stuck deep into his MOBA heart. As some of you may or may not know, myself and Tommy have racked up some several thousand hours in Dota 2 over the last five years. And we have played other MOBAs outside of Dota, but it's been a long time since I've played a MOBA that has tickled my pickle in quite the same way as Paragon did when I played it two weekends ago. I was lucky enough to go to an Epic Games event in London and I got to play several matches of Paragon on PS4. The game will be cross-platform, that's right. PS4 and PC players mixing together like some kind of disgustingly sweaty game of soup. Anyway, I played Paragon at the event, spoke with Epic Games staff, gave some feedback and generally had a fantastic time with the game. With that in mind, let's get down to the splaining. Paragon has all the staple hallmarks of a MOBA. There are two teams of five, and each team has a throne. In Paragon, these are called cores, and to win the game, you've got to destroy the enemy's core. There are three lanes. The lanes are filled with creeps, and if you use timing and skill, last hitting the enemies will net you a lot more XP than your opponent. I didn't seem to be able to deny creeps, but even just offensive last hitting is nice to have. There are two types of XP, one for your character and one for your cards. The character XP is shown on the screen in blue to the right, and card XP in orange to the left. The blue standard character experience is earned when creeps and other characters are killed by you or die near you. As in any MOBA, your characters have skills. When you level up in Paragon, you're given the choice of which skill to unlock or enhance. You seem to have two abilities, which can be upgraded to a maximum of level 5, and your character has two basic moves, which can be upgraded to level 3. Each character also has an ultimate skill, which becomes available at level 5. This again is only upgradable to level 3. The max level for your character is 15, so you can't max out every skill and ability. This allows for different players to skill their characters differently to adapt to their individual playstyles. Card experience, which I shall henceforth refer to as CP, is earned by collection of amber. Amber is the orange orbs seen on the ground, left by creeps when they die. The black orbs are amber the enemy can pick up. These will disappear over time, so it's actually possible to force an enemy out of a lane, thereby starving him of CP. You might be thinking, what the bloody hell are cards? Well, cards are essentially items. The CP you collect levels up your card points. Card points can then be used to purchase and equip cards. It's a little confusing at first, but essentially every level earns you three card points, and everyone starts with three. So when you level up, your next card level will be six, then nine, 12, 15, 18, etc, 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 all the way up to a maximum of 51. I'll come back to cards a little bit closer to the end of the video because there's quite a lot to know about them and I want to explain the meat and gravy of the game before focusing down on the peas and carrots. As in many MOBAs, the lanes have towers. This stops the enemy from running directly to your base and instantly killing your core. As you push and pull the creep waves on the lanes, you'll slowly be able to chip away at the enemy towers. By doing this, you'll gradually work your way towards the enemy's base. Be careful not to dive under the towers without some of your creeps there to soak up the BEAMS! The towers will have some little numbers on the HUD. This represents how many creeps are underneath it. If you are left alone under an enemy tower, it will wreck your face off. Once you destroy the last tower in any lane, the creeps that spawn from your base in that lane become Mega Creeps. Mega Creeps are larger, stronger, faster and stronger versions of the standard creeps who don't afraid of anything. This becomes very troublesome for the enemy, as not only do they have to contend with your team of seasoned warriors, but they must also now defend the lane against enemies that will easily push past their creeps and start to gobble down their core. <laughs> the minimap in Paragon is populated by line of sight. If you or any of your creeps or allies have an enemy within your line of sight, that enemy will appear on the minimap. This provides quite an interesting and unique solution to not having fog of war that comes along with the traditional top-down viewpoint. It allows for some brilliant opportunities to pull off ganks just as easily as you would in any other MOBA, but with a slight twist. 
Speaking of ganks, the jungle in Paragon serves similar purposes as in classic MOBAs. You can hide off the minimap and kill camps full of creeps and collect XP. Initially they're quite a maze. Several times I got lost and ended up reappearing on the same lane as I entered the jungle from. However, once you get to grips with the routes, you can very quickly and easily slip between the three lanes. Spotted throughout the jungles are circles that when stood on make you invisible. The perfect place is to lie in wait and spring a well placed gank from. There's also a boss camp with a monster that drops a powerful orb, but we'll get to that later. Let's touch back onto cards. These are the items of Paragon. There seems to be quite a lot of variety, but I didn't really get a whole lot of time to study every single one. However, here are the basics as I see it. The first two items a player should buy at the start of every game is a health and a mana potion card. These cards give you three potion charges and are replenished every time you visit your main base. You can use these cards whilst actively in battle and being attacked does not stop the card from regenerating your health or mana. Any MOBA player will be familiar with wards. The Sentry Ward card in Paragon also has three charges like the mana and health potions. The three wards that you can place using this card grant vision on the minimap over that area. The ward can be destroyed by the enemy, so hide them well. The bulk of the cards generally seem to increase specific character attributes, be it energy, Paragon's word for mana, health, physical attack, regen, critical hit percentages, or armor penetration. Many of these cards have three slots. These can be filled with other cards that you purchase. Once a card is fully slotted, it becomes maxed, usually enabling an extra bonus stat. You can build individual decks of cards, further customising how you might want to skill, equip and play your certain characters. I didn't have too much time to get into that, so I can't be overly specific. But essentially, as you level up, be sure to return to your base and spend your card points. It's important to do this, as if you have unspent points, you are limiting your effectiveness on the battlefield. There are some quite unique cards, one specifically that I'd like to touch on, called the Harvester's Key. There's six places across the map where you can place a Harvester. Harvester points don't become available until about 5 or 10 minutes after the game has begun. Once one is available, run to the centre of the pad and stand still. You must remain on the platform whilst the rig is placing. Once it is placed, you can move and it will build itself. These harvesters will slowly gather experience. After 5 minutes or so has passed, go back and check your harvester. A bar will slowly fill up and when you stand on the platform, it will release the charged experience to you and your team across the whole map. I think the idea is that one player on a team, ideally the jungler, is meant to tend to these fair gardens of deliciousness. And as the game goes on, the extra experience garnered from these harvesters will give your team a nice boost in cards. Harvesters can be destroyed by the enemy, so keep a keen eye on your crops. The advantage of having multiple harvesters giving team-wide card XP, if left unchecked, could easily provide one team with a larger advantage in the mid-game. Now let's head back to the jungle. I spoke of an orb. Well this orb is dropped from a boss monster, currently unnamed it seems. I shall call him Orbulon. Once you kill Orbulon, he drops a purple orb, which it seems any character may pick up. As soon as it's picked up, the game announcer exclaims that someone has picked up the orb. A location between the second and third tower on the left hand side of the map is picked. Presumably the top of the map if your team's base is on the bottom, and bottom if your team's base is on the top. On the minimap, the player carrying the orb flashes purple and the destination flashes blue. The aim of this turn of events is to get the orb to the blue flashing destination. This creates quite a nice dynamic, rather than just giving the boss's power over as soon as it's felled. If the orb is delivered, the team that delivers it receives an orb buff, indicated beautifully in the alpha state with some floating text. This appears to give them something in the region of a 20-25% to damage buff. I'm unsure if this effect is permanent or if it only lasts for a few minutes, but it generally spells a swift end to the game and could easily tip the scales of a stalemate style game or turn the tables for a team that is on the back foot. In closing then, Paragon to me talks the MOBA talk and walks the MOBA walk. Epic Games were very kind to invite us down to London to come and try out the game and the footage in this video was generously provided by them as unfortunately I was not able to capture the footage of my time on PS4. The game looks and plays very well on PS4 and it does not feel like a console port, it feels like a console game. I have also played the closed alpha on my PC at home and it feels just as much a PC game as it does a console game on PS4. The game is still very much in alpha right now. But so many games don't look anywhere near this polished, even at beta stages, so I've got high hopes. 
I personally am dubious as to how well someone with a PS4 controller will fare against a mouse and keyboard player. However, there are some very skilled console gamers out there, and I'm not one of them, so I shall hold my tongue until the win-loss statistics do the talking on that subject. This video only really scratches the surface of the game, explaining the bare bones and not really focusing on teamfight mechanics, individual characters, or specific decks or builds that we might be able to concoct. I'm very excited for this game, so expect more videos in the near future. Until next time, eggs! Good noon!